this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's day. good? Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> All right, Keys. Let's let's get into this conversation. So what are we talking about, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing that good Tesla talk, man. I, listen, I could just say this: I like the way my portfolio looking today. Yeah, I can't say that about every other day. You understand me? But I can say, um, you know, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, this legendary platform. Thank you for being here. Legends and some goats. Welcome to the he- welcome to the hit factory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to talk about, man. Number one, I know y'all covered a little bit about, you know, the BAYC boys, Mm -hmm. you understand me? Um, But I think it's important because they're creating a case study for uh, being leaders in the space, you know, and anytime you have leaders in the space, they influence everything that comes after them, you understand me? And you know, what we did last year, we had a lot of predictions on this show, a lot of education, and I was just about to say 119% of everything that we said came true. You understand me? I'm just well, saying. Well, scoot it a little bit closer to the mic to people saying that they, they can't said hear the, you. the voice is a little low? Yeah. So, you know, now we at this place where, you know, uh, this board at Yacht Club, it was six people that came together. Before they came together, they didn't even have a million dollars. You understand me from what I hear? You understand me? They wasn't on the radar. They wasn't influencers. They didn't have large platforms. What they did was take advantage of a space that they know was coming. They took advantage of the hype around it, the influence, everything that was happening, and they decided to execute. One of my chief sayings is interact with opportunity, don't react to success, right? Now we are reacting to the success, right? And because of their success, now they they get to become leaders of the movement. So today what we're seeing is, um, you know, of course, they have a billion dollar evaluation Now we talked about in a high level conversation, a billion dollar evaluation just means somebody with a lot of money said you're worth something. You understand me? But you need that. You need friends in high places and they got them all over at this point in time. We see the courtier, you know, buy into, pour in, leverage your money, your power, your time, influence, you understand me, and everything to increase their branding. Right. And so the board at Yacht Club, uh, of course, they dropped their eight coin, which is currently trending around 14 to 15 dollars right now. Right. Today, they dropped a merch and then they merch was a way to get more people to buy into it. But of course, there were some issues with, you know, Coinbase that they was having with that coin. But the point of it was that people were willing to buy that ape coin to get to their merch. So they're creating use case for utility. You understand me? And not only did they do that, they set up partnerships with different buildings in Miami to where people can pay their rent with it. You understand me? They really want to prove a lot of use case and utility with it. So therefore, and and not only that, there were so many people that was able to buy into their fund, apes. So they're going to be creating a lot of wealth transfer of hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, some people say, you know, up to a billion dollars with the amount of money that they allow people to buy into their project. You understand me? And at the beginning of this thing, I told you I didn't care about no artwork. I don't care about no market. It's about what the technology allows you to do. And they've been able to utilize and create a creative business model that allowed them to be able to make billions of dollars. You understand me? Or the circulation of billion dollars in the future project. Because every time I help somebody create an NFT project, I'm helping you establish a brand, create a business, build a community, utilize a technology. It's not about, you understand me, are we collecting pictures of art? That's only one aspect of how the technology can be used. The same way one aspect of, you know, uh, uh, Instagram is you can post a picture of yourself, right? But there's other different use cases and utilities. And what I want us to really pay attention to is the way brands are being built and how we communicating what is value. Because when we talk about the future of money, we're seeing it built out right now. And the cement it's still wet where it's not 100% concrete what will be, what will be successful, who gets to influence this space 100%, but there are a lot of leaders deciding to take their place and everybody is ushering to be first. You understand me? And the future of money is interesting. I said this on a breakfast club about, you know, um, Sweden, right, made an announcement that by 2030, they're going to be the first place to get rid of physical cash. You understand me? And they were also the first to have physical, you know, uh, cash backed by the bank. You understand me? And then you go over, of course, and you go look at China and China was the first to create, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, Genghis Khan, Kuba Klan grandson. He created the first money that wasn't backed by nothing but the fear of death that you have to use this. 
But at some point in time, that didn't work for him as well because they were printing way too much money. You understand me? And then that's why that fell as well. And when you go over to China right now, today, you don't need any physical dollars. You can utilize your phone. You can utilize the platforms or WePay or whatever else you want to. And you can be completely digital today. So the digital reality and the digital economy is completely growing right now in front of our eyes. And there's landscapes and there's shift that's happening. When we look at what's happening with Ukraine, I was talking to Rashad and Troy earlier. You understand me? Um, in, the, in, in Russia and how they're utilizing this technology in their war is setting the precedence, right? Bitcoin was always uh, uh, um, going to be involved in the war of currencies. So by investing in Bitcoin, you are investing into a currency war, right? So your money will be involved in that up and down space as things are being built out because of that currency war. You understand me? And the technology of looking at Bitcoin now is not that it being a currency, but it's being a storehouse of value. It being an asset that you just hold. You understand me? And the way I'm trying to get people to understand this new reality that we ushering in is understanding what can be considered money, what can be leveraged as money, you understand me, and the new forms of money, because the industry is being ripped apart from the fabric and the seams. You understand me? There's fractionalization of NFTs. You have DeFi protocol. Staking is probably going to be one of the biggest things. That's increasingly popular more than ever. These DeFi protocols is something that more people should get into, whether you study and what's going on with Acre and putting your money into that and getting, nine point, I think it's 19.5% return. Some giving you 35% return to lock your money up. But that's so dangerous because that's the greatest competition to the banks. Where you want to put your money at? And we're going into an economy where nobody is going to want to have money that's sitting anymore. You understand me? So there's a competition of money. There's a competition of banking that's happening. And the beauty of these spaces fighting right now, you understand me, is that and of course, this is before, you know, all regulation is set in because they are studying the future of money before they start to regulate so that they can see where they can benefit the best in this space and they can have control and power. Right. But if you are not if you have a bank account and you don't understand staking and yield farming, that's an issue. That's a liability. Well, you understand let, me? let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Got no keys? Can go. Yeah, yeah. Y'all oh, told me to. Y'all oh, told me to get started. <laughs> nah, the, le the leather has come off. The leather. the leather has come off. That's one layer of the matrix. Yeah. Shout out to first of all. Shout out to you too. Seventy three hundred people hit the like button. <laughs> hit the like, like button. Let's, I was, let's get into it. I was reading the comments. I was amused by some of them. Nino Brown before the trial was my favorite. <laughs> before the trial. Yeah. Before the trial. Before the trial. <laughs> before the trial. <laughs> Very dangerous. That is very true. dangerous. Very dangerous. Um, very dangerous, man. Very dangerous. So let me ask you this. Let's um let's let's bring it back home. NFTs. You this is perfect timing because we a lot of people still don't understand NFTs. They don't understand like the use case for NFTs. They think it's just like some some weird art on the internet. So this is a perfect situation that we just came upon. So yeah. Um, you brought courtside tickets yesterday uh -huh. to, to Kyrie's uh, home game, his first yeah. home game of the season, the Nets versus the Pelicans. And I was supposed to go with you. Hornets, Hornets. Yeah. The Hornets, Hornets. the Hornets. Yeah. I was supposed to go with you. And uh, I couldn't make it because my son had a basketball tournament in Pennsylvania. So I was out of town. So I told you like last minute, like, bro, I can't make it. And it was like, all right, you know, figuring out who we could give the ticket to, we could sell a ticket. And then I kind of had the idea, but you you actually said it. And you was like, um, well, actually, let's make an NFT out of it. Mm -hmm. And literally, the game was at 7.30. We had this conversation like 4 o'clock. And I'm like, you don't think that this is too short time? He's like, nah, make a post. He made a post. He posted it on his page. I posted it on Earn Your Leisure's page. He made the NFT. And within a half an hour, it was sold. Mm -hmm. Talk about that, because that's a real use case that actually happened in real life within 30 minutes yesterday. Yeah, I think it's the perfect use case. Um... But, and it goes into how that whole entire ticket space is going to be disrupted. You understand me? Because I could have chose to put it on a platform and sell it. Right. Instead, I was able to upload it on my phone, on my own smart contract that I own. You understand me? That's part of the Crown Society. And what happened was I, I uploaded, I utilized Rarible, first of all. So I got the ticket. The ticket is going to give you a barcode. 
to where you get access to the Crown Club. The Crown Club is beautiful once you get down there. Now, listen, I'm not sitting no other seat with courtside from now on. You understand me? I got to <laughs> yeah, yeah. get almost hit by the ball. You know what I'm talking about? I got to feel like I'm in the game. But anyway, uh, once you hit me, I had to think of it because like I tell people, the most, the, the greatest thing right now is your creativity because all of the tools are out there. It's about how you use it, right? So when you think about NFTs and blockchain and all these things, think about how could this be used? That's it. Don't even think so much about what is this technology? Don't get caught up in that. Think about how this can be used. So I say, I got the ticket. Rashad can't pull up. So let's go ahead and make it an NFT. Therefore, I can verify who owns this. Now, I had two options. If I had a lot of time, I could have did a buy or a bid. A buy is essentially saying that whoever buys it first owns it, and then they can sell it to whoever secondary. A bid is saying that in a certain amount of time frame, then people get the bid and whoever wins out in this time frame, then they now own it. So now I'm going courtside to a game. That's an experience. The tickets are already expensive. So I say, wait a minute, we can utilize the platform to push this out to a mass amount of people. Whoever wants that experience to come into the game with 19 keys and replace or a replace of Rashad, then they can buy this NFT. And at any other point in time, I can decide that whoever owns this NFT can get additional value just for owning it. So the young brother, his name was Web Surfer. You understand me on the internet, but his real name was Jeffrey. You understand me? Jeffrey seen that post. He said he happened to be down the street from the stadium in Brooklyn. You understand me? He told me that he fired his job. He wrote a book. He had part of the infinite wealth strategies. You understand me? He had a whole testimony. It was a beautiful moment. He bought it. And at first I couldn't find who it was. Right. I called you. I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to be holding the bag. And they trying to get a refund with that Ethereum. You understand me? So I said, we got to figure out who this is. So then we post sold out. Right. Because it sold out in like maybe 20 minutes. You understand me? You're talking about the game about to start in 30. So. Then I got the bright idea. I say, wait a minute. Everything is transparent on the blockchain. When somebody buys it, I see the transaction. Everybody sees the record of the transaction, right? So therefore, I got his wallet address because I see that he was the one who bought it. And I made a second NFT. The second NFT was of the ticket. The first NFT was a picture of, you know, the Crown's Keys NFT. And so he bought that first one. I seen who bought it. And then I made a second NFT and I sent it to his wallet. The second NFT was the actual ticket with the barcode on it. Mm. You understand me? So therefore, when he got in his wallet, he can go to the door, scan it. Then he gets access. Now, he told me it's crazy because he must have told a friend that he bought it and he didn't know I sent this to him. But because everything is transparent, his friend seen that it was in his wallet. You understand me? So his friend told him, like, yo, here go the ticket in your wallet. So then he pulled up grabbed the ticket, came to the game, and the young brother had an experience of a lifetime. And let me let me just say one last thing about this. Um, so this is this is something that I don't want to take for granted because the first thing I was talking to Troy, I'm like, I want to resell a ticket because I'm yeah. not going to make it. So Troy, he's giving me the information on how to actually sell a ticket like on StubHub, mm-hmm. which would have just been sold to a random person. And StubHub would have got their commission and that's how people usually go about it. Yeah. But Keys had the idea to actually make it an NFT. Yeah. And now it's an experience, right? So now somebody from his community actually purchased it. So it's not just a random person that you sit next to. So now you offer an experience. How much did you sell the ticket for? It was 1.8 ETH. So that was around 5,200. So he sold the ticket for $5,200 within 30 minutes. Um, so... That's that's actually like a game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially for people who go to to games and concerts. Like he got me thinking like, damn, that's kind of a hell of experience. Because one of the things we do is like if we go somewhere, we sit in in the front. But on top of sitting in the front, the experience of actually going to places with us, that's kind of ill. But you know what? I was thinking it while you were saying the story and when I I heard about it last night, that could have been there could have been royalties on that ticket. Like if they would have sold it. But Mm -hmm. did you so did you do that? Did you put like a royalty if it got resold? Yeah, I got 10 percent royalties on there. And so, look, I can decide right now. I can say, well, whoever gets that, whoever owns that ticket on the 19th of April, you understand me? You can uh, uh, I'll fly you out to L.A. and be on my podcast, High Level Conversation. So now so it now it just added a whole nother level of value into ownership of that NFT. Mm. You understand me? So now somebody be like, oh, well, I feel like that's worth $10,000. I want my business to be on the platform. You understand me? And they decide he could put it on sale for two ETH, 10 ETH. You understand me? And somebody will buy that. And for the rest of eternity, I can decide what value I want to attach to that NFT. 
Mm. You understand me? Because it's like a membership pass at this point. How? How? So obviously this happened pretty quickly. What about the gas fees that are associated? Were, were they high? Because those people uh, are trying to figure out, oh, wait, uh, there's a lot of gas fees. So number one, how were the gas fees? And then I guess for people who are not in the know, can you tell them what the gas, yeah. what gas fees are? I think I paid maybe like 40, 40, 50 dollars in gas fees. And the second one, interesting, something happened where I don't think I paid any gas fees on one aspect of it. I was able to put one of them up there and they it was like zero dollars in gas fees. You understand me? So I, at, at the whole transaction, maybe a hundred dollars in gas fees. That's not bad. You understand quick, me? Maybe. Quick right? question for you. Yes, sir. For those who are at home watching, and I know man, there may be 50% of the people who may not understand still, mm-hmm. even though you did the eloquent and amazing breakdown. Would you say because the way business is changing forever that NFTs are being used as like a membership site or an incentive-based way to get people to do business with us? So for the layman, let's say we have a 50-year-old or a grandma who doesn't understand outside of utility, what is the most effective way you're seeing yourself in, in Board 8 Yacht Club use NFTs to conduct business? Community. The connection in the community is what first draw people to buy into the project in the first place, right? Mm-hmm. When I wanted to buy into crypto punks, it's because I thought about, well, if it's only 10,000 of these, you understand me, only probably 4,200 owners, right? And a large percentage of these owners are high net worth individuals, celebrities, influential, some of the top 1% in the world. I want to be a part of that club. You understand me? So now anything attached to that ownership and anything that happens, that's something I have in common with the people who also own it. So Jay-Z bought one. Well, one thing that me and Jay-Z got in common is that we both own a very rare piece, you understand me, of art. It's digital art nonetheless, but we are somewhere, you understand me, interconnected in the same club. So I think the community aspect is the most beautiful thing because what's happening with the apes? Everybody wants to be an ape. They want to be a part of the club because when you're not in the club, you're outside. And the worst thing is to be standing in line wanting to get inside. You understand me, especially when access comes with privilege, right? And so the club aspect is the most beautiful because these people are saying, well, listen, we now are going to give this, and people are using it really as a status symbol at the same time. Yes. yes. At the at the most simplistic level, it's a status symbol. You understand me? It's the new Rolex, it's the new Lambo. You understand me? It's the new stunt. And with all the verification happening from Instagram, right? from uh, Twitter, right? And all these places, okay, so everybody yeah. is going to eventually have a verification for it. Like, yeah. please do not look at what the future is and be like, okay, this is the length of where the space is going. No, these are just people who are early in the space, mm-hmm. but these are going to be standards in the world. You understand me? When people really catch on what this means. So there's no way, you know, like bro who bought that, there's only uh, one other person that has that type of NFT from my collection. And this is brother, I'm a fly out, him and his son. I'm giving him an NFT every month for 19 months. You understand me? A fly his son, had dinner with them, put him on a podcast, shoot content with him. That's an amazing experience. When he's done with that experience, he can decide to sell it to somebody else and I can add whatever value I want to. You become a part of an exclusive club. I went out to France. My bro, I, I was King there. G. I was there. Yeah. We, we, had a, we had a legendary night. You were yeah. very legendary. Shout out to everybody <laughs> in the room. <laughs> yes. I went out to France. A Crown Society member hit me up and said, listen, I got a restaurant. Yep. I wouldn't have really listened to that text or that, that DM if he didn't say Crown Society member first. But now I got a connection when he a part of my community. I'm not ignoring nobody in my community. You understand me? He said, I have a restaurant. Come here. I'm going to take care of you. So I'm checking it out like, oh, this. I'm thinking maybe like a promoter for something. I literally get there. He own it. His uncle at the door, like, what's up, Keys? The whole family tapped in. You understand me? And, and, and it was beautiful because that's the connectivity that we can have internationally. You understand me? So like everybody that's in a red panda, everybody that's an earner, imagine when Instagram decided to create those verification badges. Now you can tell who's a part of that community. You understand me? Because they bought into it. Mm-hmm. So now it's going to be like, I'm inside, you outside type of thing. Then yeah. once you start putting money levels on it, this one costs 20,000. This costs 30,000. Now you know what level a person playing with. Mm. You might be inside the club, but I'm in the VIP section. And the thing that I was explaining to Stock Club, look at it like this. What Board Ape Yacht Club did was the digital manifestation of what Fire Festival was trying to do. Think of it that way. They were selling exclusivity, events, and things that would never happen anywhere else. So for those of you that are still lost, just think of what all the high-end brands do which is, hey, it is a status symbol and there are perks that comes with that. This is just the digital 
version of that. Hey, hey. 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 Hey.